Across the border in Israel, armed guards protected one resident, making her first quick trip home since she escaped Hamas. What happened here was a, a, a massacre of people in their own home. Uh, and we can look at what happened here. Men from the village security team went ahead because Gaza at its closest is only 50 meters away and Hamas has tried to get back in. Okay. We're going. Hilla Fenlon's first stop was the home of close friends. It is the first time I'm here. I'm not sure I can go inside. I don't want to see it. I'm not sure. In the sitting room, the TV remote is still on the table and the bedroom floor is covered in their dried blood. They had weapons and tried to defend themselves. But Hamas killed Ayelet and Shlomi Molko and the rescue dogs they'd looked after since their three children left home. It was not a relaxing walk right on the edge of Israeli territory or an easy homecoming for Hilla Fenlon, who hid with her family for 12 hours until they were rescued. We heard it. We heard the shouting, we heard the screaming, we heard the, 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 obviously all the fire that was going on. We saw the smoke and we uh, smelled the smoke. Do you think there's a chance for peace now in any, in any way? There's always a chance for peace, but you need two sides who want it. And you saw the wall. We are a community on the border and we said from day one, we live here because we know we want peace and peace is possible. But you need two for that tango. Around 800 people lived in Netiv HaAsara. Hamas killed 21 of them. Israel says it will wipe Hamas from the earth for what it's done. But until the attacks, the government made deals with Hamas, undermining other Palestinians who wanted peace. Down the road, Hamas tried to kill a family. They tried to get in the shelter. And he, uh, he was holding the handle. He holding the handle and they dropped the grenades. The door held. Inside, the father jammed the handle. And as the family escaped through a window, Hamas tried to kick their way in. The house here is full of fragments of these lives that were interrupted. All the stuff people have in their houses. Kids' toys, the scooter, photos on the fridge, the washing up done. All done on what seemed to be a normal evening, the 6th, before on Saturday the 7th, Hamas came here. Israelis support their soldiers. They are bitterly divided about whether Prime Minister Netanyahu is part of their problem. I, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I don't trust my government, and more than this, I don't trust Hamas. So two of them need to be out of the way. Hamas is responsible to what happened here, but this government is responsible for what happened to us as well, because they were in charge of our security. Hila made it back to her house for the first time since the family escaped Hamas. The guards checked the building was clear. I'm back home. I'm taking the opportunity to get some stuff because I only have two T-shirts on me. Hilla is a farmer. Her harvest is lost. Now Israelis and Palestinians need to rescue the future. I need to water the plants. They only had a few minutes. Hilla says they're lucky. Her sister and niece were saved when the gunman attacking their house was killed by a neighbor whose own son was lost. Hilla's partner packed up some clothes. They don't expect to come back anytime soon. The war is too close to their home. The risks of its spreading are acute. Hard days lie ahead. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, at Nativ HaAsara.